Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, sometimes sons need to listen to their fathers. Now, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. has a father who is a Boxing Hall of Famer. He's one of the best fighters of the 20th century. Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Right now, Sr. and Jr., as happens from time to time in families, have had their issues. But Sr. loves his son and has candidly told his son that he didn't want his son to fight this opponent, Andres Fonfara, at this stage of his career. Right? In my opinion, Chavez Jr. should have listened to his father based on the odds I'm seeing from Las Vegas casinos and understand the odds matter. We're trying to beat the casino. We're trying to get value. The bet I'm recommending here is to take Funfara at plus 250 to win the fight. Hedged with Chavez Jr. by KO at a plus 175. Understand, since you're getting better than even money odds on both sides of the play, if either happens, you net a profit. Understand, though, Chavez Jr. is a greater than 3-1 to one favorite to win this fight. So we're actually swimming against the tide here. Let's talk about it. Now, I have Chavez Jr. on my car crash list. Right? People who are longtime subscribers here may recall I actually took Martinez over Chavez Jr. Right? Well, let's talk about why Chavez Jr., in my opinion, is, we'll call it driving, right? Proceeding in his career in a reckless manner. What I want people to do is to look back at the CompuBox numbers for Chavez Jr.'s fight against Sebastian Zvik. Right? You're going to find unbalanced CompuBox numbers. Not in Chavez Jr.'s favor. Right? I want people to go back understanding the history of CompuBox. I believe you'd be hard-pressed to find a fight where a guy lost a decision with better CompuBox numbers versus his opponent than Sebastian Zvik had in that fight. Right now, whoever you thought won that fight, just understand that fight's controversial. Right? Chavez Jr. wasn't the clear-cut winner. Right? Now, that fight is on tape. I encourage people to look at it because Junior has depressed volume, right? Junior, who I thought looked great on his back foot at times against John Duddy, against Vic, he's just a front foot fighter, right? Muscling his way inside. And as it is, the other guy outperforms him on the CompuBox numbers. I understand CompuBox doesn't measure the ferocity of the punch, right? They'll just say power punch. They won't grade the power punch. I'm not here to say CompuBox is perfect. But as you watch the fight, you'll notice it's an iffy proposition, right? Chavez Jr., let's just say, looks limited in the fight and didn't win that fight overwhelmingly. Let's talk about another fight. The Andy Lee fight. Andy Lee comes out and, folks, he's beating Chavez Jr. He looks better than Chavez Jr. the first few rounds of that fight. In fact, I believe when that fight is stopped, 
and he leads ahead on the judges' scorecards. Right? Chavez Jr. looked like he couldn't box with Andy Lee. Now, let me say this. That fight, too, is controversial. Understand, Andy Lee's a guy who is a warrior. You just saw him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Peter Quillen. Right? Andy Lee is not the most timid guy in the ring. He's there trying to throw big punches. He assumes you're going to throw big punches. Right? You saw the finish of his fight against Julian Jackson's son. Right? Andy Lee is accustomed to doling out punishment and receiving some punishment back. Right? Understand that Andy Lee didn't think that that fight was on the up and up. Nor did the man in his corner, who we'll just say was very experienced in boxing. Emmanuel Stewart, you might remember him, right? The Cronk Gym, Thomas Hearns, Milk McQuarrie, many others from the Cronk Gym. Uh, in the corner of a couple of heavyweights, uh, Lennox Lewis, Vladimir Klitschko, right? You might remember Emmanuel Stewart. And you can imagine, too, if you were in the corner of, let's say, a Lennox Lewis when he fought a Mike Tyson or of a Vladimir Klitschko, um, Emmanuel Stewart's not the most squeamish guy in the gym, right? He's a guy who's accustomed to seeing fighters dealing with heavy-handed opponents. But from the corner, Stewart thought something was wrong, right? Andy Lee told Stewart that Chavez Jr. seemed to be like the Incredible Hulk, right? Neither man could understand how Chavez Jr. suddenly became such a devastating puncher midway through that fight. Now, there was a drug testing protocol that was supposed to have been followed. I believe that fight was in the state of Texas. Let's just say that drug testing protocol was not followed, right? We're in the interactive computer age where information is at your fingertips. I hope you look up that Andy Lee Chavez Jr. fight. Well, then we get to another fight. That's troublesome. Sergio Martinez against Chavez Jr. Now, an insider, you might know this insider. He's also one of boxing's best-known trainers. Freddie Roach, who, by the way, you know, <laughs> was Chavez Jr. Stringer, right? Freddie Roach openly talks about how, doesn't name Chavez Jr. by name, but how his fighter that night against Sergio Martinez apparently had hardly trained. Now, now how's that possible? You're in a unification match. And you're so disorganized in your life that you don't think that you have to train more than a few times. I mean, according to Freddie Roach, Chavez Jr. trained maybe a handful of times for that fight. Think about it. At the time, Chavez Jr. was unbeaten. Right? Think about it. Let's just say Freddie was so upset and think about the easy payday, right? Chavez Jr. is one of boxing's most box office blessed fighters. He's very popular, folks. He generates some of the highest ratings in the sport. Now, if you're Freddie Roach, you know that being his trainer means, let's do a Johnny Manziel. Being his trainer means money, right? Time to get paid. Freddie Roach decided he had had enough. Right? He's like his mentor, Eddie Futch, who walked away from former heavyweight champion Riddick Bo because Bo wouldn't train. Well, Eddie Futch's protege, Freddie Roach, right, and research the history between the two men, right? Understand, Eddie Futch is the guy who pulled the plug in the thriller in Manila, refused to let his fighter. One of the sport's best warriors ever, Joe Frazier, come out for the last round. 
because Futch understood Joe was blind, right? Understand in the footsteps of his mentor, Eddie Futch, Freddie Roach pulled the plug on his relationship with Chavez Jr., one of boxing's box office gods. Think about it. Think about how upset Freddie must have been with Chavez Jr.'s training habits. Think about it. He was looking at easy money. He was looking at access to these pay cable stations. One of the biggest names in boxing. Freddie Roach decided he had better things to do. Now let's talk about another fight, another storm cloud that in my opinion is over Chavez Jr. You have to view Chavez Jr. as someone who might be prone to car crashes. Now I've named a few of them. The Sebastian Zavik fight, the Andy Lee fight, the Sergio Martinez fight. Let's add the first Brian Vera fight. Now as you research that fight, I don't care what the internet tells you about the scoring of that fight, the official scoring. I'm here to tell you that these two eyes saw Brian Vero beat Chavez Jr. Right? Brian Vero won that fight, folks. But of course, this is boxing. Right? We're not looking at the same stopwatch. We're in different time zones. We're using different guides to the sport in figuring out how to interpret it. Brian Vero beat Chavez Jr. Somehow, that's not how that fight was scored. So now, this brings us to Andres Fonfara. Now, let's understand who Fonfara is. The light heavyweight division. Let's name the biggest names of the light heavyweight division. Who's the last light heavyweight champion to have won Boxer of the Year? Oh, that's, that's Adonis Stevenson. Right? We'll also throw in some other... Big names in the light heavyweight division, uh, Bernard Hopkins. You might recall he lost to Sergei Kovalev, another big name. You might have seen Jean Pascal look dominant over Lucien Boutte, right? Understand Adonis Stevenson is one of the biggest names at light heavyweight. Just ask Tony Bellu, right? Adonis Stevenson is a big chin check at 175 pounds. Guess what? Andres Fonfara has already fought him. Guess what? In that fight, right? Rough and tumble affair. Rough and tumble affair. But there's a moment in that fight where we get to the later rounds. And Andres Fonfara, rather than take his foot off the gas... Rather than look for, find, and wave a white flag, instead decides that he's going to deck the reigning light heavyweight champion. He puts Adonis Stevenson on the canvas. Stevenson has to get off the canvas and is lucky to have survived that fight. Let's say the later rounds of that fight, if you said, guess which one's the champ? You wouldn't have known. Right? It was competitive, folks. The challenger was in there, and I know Funfara is slapping himself in the face thinking, how did I give away so many of the early rounds? Right? Because boxing, you're seeing this opponent for the first time. You might not pace yourself correctly. Things might not work out the way you want, even when you have the best of intentions. Here's what we know. In the later rounds of that fight, Andres Fonfara held his own. Right? I don't have to guess whether Andres Fonfara is a legitimate light heavyweight. He's earned his stripes at light heavyweight. He's been in the ring with the champ and he's held his own. Right? What about Chavez Jr.? You notice how the fights I'm naming, Zvik, Andy Lee, Sergio Martinez, they're at middleweight, folks. They're at middleweight. 
this fight even at a catch weight, right? Because let's face it, catch weights are taking over boxing. Even at a catch weight, this fight is scheduled to be fought in the 170s. How do I know that Chavez Jr.'s skills are going to translate to this division? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Things aren't quite the same already, though, right? Because Freddie Roach is no longer in his corner. But more importantly, styles make fights. I'm here to tell you that Chavez Jr. hasn't fought for several months. He was dealing with a lawsuit with his promoter. He uh, signed with a new management group. A lot's been happening in his life. He hasn't fought for many months. Right? I'm telling you, when you see a guy with ring rust, when a guy's returning to the ring and you're thinking, oh man, where, where has this guy been? For months. And his opponent has a good jab. A good jab. Like Andres Fanfara has. A jab that's going to keep you busy. In other words, it's bad enough that I'm rusty. Now I'm in the ring and the other guy's actually going to force me to box? You know, the other guy's actually going to have me thinking that, hey, I have, to, I have to get by this jab to launch my attack? Right? You know, Fonfar is going to be throwing volume, he's going to be throwing a jab, and he's going to be hovering around the pocket. Folks, it's not an easy fight. Here, I believe Dad knows best. Chavez Sr. saw on far and he said, No, no, this isn't the right opponent for my son. This isn't the fight we want. Right? Junior, right? Sometimes sons are a little bit hard-headed. Junior decided to sign the contract anyway. Understand, even the crowd's going to be a problem. The fight's in the same place where... Roberto, uh, Robert Guerrero beat Carmage, right? And the crowd was cheering a shootout, right? The crowd was cheering aggression, right? I get the feeling that Chavez Jr., who's been out of the ring, is going to be in the ring and the crowd's going to be cheering for him to be aggressive. So he's going to try to walk through a stiff jab. That's a problem. Right? Now, maybe he does. I'll agree, Fanfara doesn't have the best muscle tone. He looks a little bit thin to me, especially up here around the neck. Right? You get hit in the head, you want a guy with some neck muscles. Where, you know, that neck's not going to, you know, bend too much. His head's not going to bounce around too much. Fonfara looks like he's long-necked and thin-necked. I'll agree. Chavez Jr. certainly was a puncher in the Andy Lee fight. Right? Andy Lee didn't survive that fight like he did against Peter Quillen. Right? I'll agree. From what we know of Chavez Jr., he's a puncher. Maybe he walks through Fonfara. If he does, okay, I'll, I'll collect on the plus 175 Chavez by KO part of the bet. But you've got to be kidding me if you think this is a walk in the park. I think it's a dangerous fight. And if the casino is going to give me plus 250, plus 250 on Funfara to win. Keep in mind, Funfara could win a decision I'm collecting. If Chavez Jr. is completely unprepared and gets stopped, I'm collecting. Right? The bet I'm recommending is Fanfara to win the fight. That's a plus 250. This is a guy who gave Adonis Stevenson problems. It's Fanfara to win the fight at plus 250, hedged with Chavez Jr. by KO at plus 175. Right? You win handsomely if either of those things happen. You don't care how Fanfara wins the fight. He wins the fight. The minute they say the winner, you're in line collecting. As for Chavez Jr., he himself is talking about how he needs a dramatic win. 
He's gotten so many gifts in his life. Right? The Carlos Molina fight. Come on now. We know he didn't win that first fight. Come on now. Right? The Brian Vera fight, I'm still sore over that fight. Right? Chavez Jr. has gotten so many gifts in his life that he has to realize that the Santa Claus part of his career is over. Now he's going to have to earn stuff. Right? Boxing fans will only tolerate gifts for so long. So I believe Chavez Jr., in part because of the crowd, is going to step on his front foot and try to walk through Andres Funfara's jab. If he's successful, I think he gets a stoppage. If he's unsuccessful, I think he gets beaten. I like Funfara to win, hedged with Chavez Jr. by KO. Understand, I know Chavez Jr., odds-wise, is a big favorite in this fight but we're trying to beat the casino not follow the crowd and I like these odds let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com let me just say this too understand that Chavez senior was a much more elusive fighter than Chavez junior Right, Chavez Sr. was actually harder to find in the ring than Chavez Jr., right? One would argue that, given the height differences between the two guys, Chavez Jr. should really develop, you know, skills that also use length, right? Chavez, Jr., uh, Chavez Sr. didn't have to. Chavez Sr., a shorter fighter, you know, bobbed his head, used elusiveness, but didn't rush in like Mike Tyson rushed in. Right? I view Chavez Sr. as the Tyson who beat Michael Spinks. Right? Patient on the outside, throwing punches, elusive. His son, who's heavy-handed, doesn't have the elusiveness. Right? Is taller, there's more of him. He's easier to find, right? I think he should listen to his father. His father was a more refined, tougher matchup than Junior, right? I believe his father has a lot of knowledge that Junior needs to listen to a lot more. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.